While Shakespeare has long been dead, his works continue to be taught in classrooms, each teacher and student with their own approaches and perspectives to perceiving his works. They continue to be turned into live theater and cinematic adaptations from all over the world, perhaps because of the endless possibilities of how they can be transformed, reimagined, and challenged. Even in the case of these drawings, very different drawings could be presented with my words. This is mainly why I chose to have a sort of semi-animated visual to mimic how Shakespeare's words are paired to a visual component in many of his adaptations. The words disinter and disobey are very strong, and how disinter conjures up an image of exhuming a corpse, and disobey suggests a potential lack of respect. However, it is adaptations, especially those that disinter and disobey Shakespeare's plays, that revitalize his works and invite new perspectives in an ever-growing discourse. A discourse that welcomes seeing things through different lenses, including feminist, anthropocenic, and psychoanalytic lenses. One way to see it is that Shakespeare's works act as a seed that, as it grows, gains many branches, or adaptations, that enter into a discourse with the source material. While the original text is important and necessary to the adaptation's existence, it will not necessarily obey it, much like a child to a parent. However, it is still enjoyable to see how the unpredictable branches will twist and turn, and if they will blossom flowers or bear fruit. The idea of disobeying Shakespeare helps us to acknowledge the limits of his perspective as a white male during his time period and bring it into a contemporary discourse. Modern adaptations invite discussions of current social and political issues, technology, climate change, etc., where adaptations around these topics add to the chorus of voices that surround the cores of Shakespeare's work. In visualizing in terms of instrumentalization, Shakespeare can be the soloist, the one voice at the beginning of an orchestral performance. As his works get adapted, more and more instruments are added to this collection of sound. It enriches, layers, and supports one another in harmony. There may be moments of discord in this kind of music piece, which composers intentionally add to create moments of tension and urgency, for example. It is in this way that disobeying Shakespeare has value, as it asks us to question familiar aspects of his plays, while forcing us to constantly challenge, reimagine, and revisualize our understanding of his works particularly through how universal Shakespeare is. How we understand him shapes how we see the world in our lives. And disobeying Shakespeare invites new perspectives, creativity, and gives a chance to reinvent what is familiar. So, in asking, why do adaptations continue to disinter or disobey Shakespeare? It is through doing this that we can reaffirm our enjoyment of his plays and gain a renewed understanding of the ever-changing world around us.